just beautiful as always. We're so grateful for you. Good morning, everybody. I am Reverend Beverly Stratt. I am the spiritual director here at Center for Spiritual Living East Hawaii. And I get to welcome you here on this really soggy day. This morning I was thinking, oh, I remember the days of Zoom when all I had to do was roll out and put on a top. It would have been great. I could have just done that rolled right out of bed. Just a top. That would have been it. Pajamas from the bottom down. Nobody would have known the difference. We would all have stayed dry, but no. And I am delighted to see everybody that showed up. I even told them, I go, oh, don't worry about the back chairs. We're just going to have a few people today. No, I was wrong, and I'm so happy to say that I was wrong. Yeah, they don't hear that very often. <laughs> anyway, welcome to everybody. Welcome to all of those out there in uh, YouTube. And um, it just, it's just one of those days where we're going to Look at everything as it falls forward into us. I want to say a quick blessing for Joan and Sunny, knowing that all is well in their world. Thank you to um, Shelley for stepping in to speak the words that Joan had so beautifully written. And I l always love it when Joan does this because she takes it in a direction that I'm not going in, and I just don't understand how that works. I mean, as far as I was concerned, there was only one way to take this, and she finds just another beautiful way to do that. But before we get into that, I want to just bring in to our attention that this week, we walk into the beginning of Lent. Everybody knows what Lent is, right? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> this is Lent. No. And so Lent is that wonderful time of the year. We all know it came from when Jesus went off into the desert to do his 40 days and 40 nights of fasting and um, taking on the challenges and releasing everything so that he could walk back in and get hung. Right? Okay. We know that part of it. That was all in his choice. But the bottom line is we do Lent in a little different way sometimes here. The one thing I love about Lent that get kicked off on Ash Wednesday, is that the night before is Mardi Gras. You know, come on. We all know we're going to be fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. Let's eat a big meal. You know, we really want to. I love Mardi Gras. I love everything that it brings forward. I used to work at a Cajun Creole restaurant, and we did it up. It was fantastic. We couldn't eat for 40 days because we were so full. But no, so we, we, we send it off with this great big party. We send it off in a celebration. And then we go in and we do Ash Wednesday and we start 40 days and 40 nights of Lent, excluding Sundays, which nobody ever told me. Nobody ever told me it was a Sunday. So here I'm counting all these days out and that, and that Lent ends on Easter Sunday. No, it ends on the Thursday before. I waited those four days to eat Easter eggs because I always gave up chocolate. I was being ripped off by my own ignorance. But as I got to know what was going on, what I really found was really more important of all is what is it that we're giving up? Sure, it's really easy and nice to go, oh, I'm going to give up chocolate, or as I did for a long time, I gave up shots of tequila. But it, whatever was your choice to do that was going to make you feel more at one with yourself so that you could dive a little deeper. So as I've moved further and deeper into science of mind, one of the things that has come forward is that we try and give up some of our old beliefs. We really want to give up that which no longer serves us. Because, and this is a perfect time, because it's not forever, right? It's a finite period of time where you get to just dive into it, see how it feels, see if you can. Because when we give up stuff forever, like we do our, um, our uh, beginning of the year, when we do those, what are they called? Um, resolutions, right? When we do that, it's kind of like forever. And how many of us keep that going? Mm, yeah, by, t by February, we're like thinking, oh, we'll do it next year. But this is a finite period of time, so we can get to go in, we can delve into it, we can see how it feels, and build a habit. Because 21 days is a great time to build a habit in, so 40 days, you're doing really good. But instead of giving up something physical, we can start giving up that which no longer serves us. So this Lent, 
I'm going to invite you, if you choose, to join me. And one of the things that I am going to work with people to give up is resistance. Isn't that a goodie? Resistance. You can take it wherever you like. But resistance just to the idea of that you can't change. Resistance to that doesn't work for me. Resistance to holding on to the old and wanting it to be the same way. Resistance to the idea of resistance. We can take it wherever we want. But my invitation to you as we walk through this Lent, and please feel free at any time to reach out to me, come and have a chat about it, is to see and be aware where resistance is showing up. You'd be surprised. Because so often we're just like, oh, I'm just not into it. No, no. Yeah, where's the resistance there? Let's have a look what's going on. Let's have a look at what it is that we're really feeling. And if we can acknowledge right away that it's just resistance, we can go, I've given that up for Lent. Let's get on with life, right? And we can work our way through it. So that's my invitation about Lent. My other invitation is go out and have a great time on Tuesday night and then breathe in and let's walk into this very, very, very old tradition. And don't toss it out because you go, oh, but that's not science of mind. Science of mind doesn't limit if it is something that's going to work for you and you can walk it into your way of being, do the walk. That's what I want to give you today. What do you think? Yeah? Are we on board? We're going to do it? I'd like to do that. But here's the thing. We are quite resistant to change. So one of my little humorous words, my little sentence today is from a caterpillar. The caterpillar pointing up at the butterfly and saying, you'll never get me up in one of those things. Ah, I love it. You'll never get me up in one of those things. <laughs> yeah, right. Like the caterpillar has a choice. <laughs> anyway, we feel that sometimes. We don't want to change. And so as we walk into this month, which is curiosity, we're well into it. And uh, curiosity is a superpower, which always really ignites our desire to see things a little differently. Um, I think the caterpillar might get a little curious and go, actually, I'd rather be up there because down here it's kind of wet today. Let's go flying. We can look at today's topic, which is the world is an oyster, from the point of view of curiosity. Not curiosity is the way Joan brought it forward as we have everything in front of us, which we do. The world is an oyster for us. We get to experience it to the degree that we desire. But where I'm taking it today, with the world being an oyster, is that place where, you know an oyster filters a ton of water through it. That's what it does. It filters water through it. But with that filtering, there's some stuff that comes up, like a speck of dust, some dust, some dirt, will get between the mantle of the oyster and start to irritate it. Yeah, we can all know what that feels like to be an oyster that has got this irritation going on. But what happens is the oyster doesn't just look away and go, yeah, no, I'm not going to deal with that. It starts to layer, layer, and layer upon it this mucus that turns into naphtha, right? It starts to transform this irritant into something quite magnificent. It makes something out of something that it would maybe want to just to push under the rug and go, ah, that's not really there. I'm not going to look at it. It's going to go away. Not mine. It's a piece of dirt from the outside. But it's not going anywhere. It is in the oyster. It is causing an irritation. So as opposed to fighting it, it starts to transform it. Sound like anything we want to do? What do you think? I think so. I think there is a desire that when we get to that point of seeing that there is something in us that doesn't want to let go, that maybe we can look at it differently. We quit resisting the irritation and we start looking at what can we make of this. Is this a gift? Is this a gift being brought to us 
that we can transform it into something beautiful. It doesn't happen overnight. It's layer upon layer upon layer. And it's every time we look at that thing that is irritating us that we put another layer on it. And it gets shinier and bigger and more beautiful. And so we can feel that transformation within us. Where we can take something unlike what we desire in the world or in us because we always begin with ourselves when we do transformation. We can take that and turn it into something that is a pearl. We love pearls. There's something magical about them. There is a unique look when we see them. And we know, we know this didn't just pop out of nowhere. We know that that oyster worked on that piece. That oyster put time and energy into creating that pearl. Dr. Ernest Holmes, the founder of our teaching, he says this about the changes that we make. He goes, we do not change all of the patterns of our thoughts in a moment. Rather, it takes place little by little until gradually the old thought patterns become transformed into new ones by some inner alchemy of the mind. So if we see that this transformation that the oyster does in the physical being, and we can do it in our physical being, but he says it's alchemy of the mind. Ah, that's goodness. Because we know, we say, change your thinking, change your life. So you start with your thought. You change your thought first. And slowly as that thought changes, it changes your belief, and the belief becomes who you are. So you will attract to you who you are. You will change the world by who you are, by your ideas. So that's a great segue. Because the next part of this is wanting to make changes in the world. How do we do that? How do we take our passion and create things in the world around us? Well, we take that same irritant, things that we don't really want to see in the world, we start working on them. We don't put them aside. We look directly at them. We see what they are. But so often, we will not move into that space of looking at it because there is this idea that, well, we're not good enough. Or, oh, I'm not going to make a difference in the world. Pima Chodron, who speaks, who uh, wrote this beautiful book called When Things Fall Apart, she goes, the feelings of irritation, resentment, and anger, instead of being bad news, are actually clear moments that teach us where we are holding back. Isn't that brilliant? Those things that irritate us are bringing to our attention, where are we holding back? Where is it that we could actually move forward and make some changes in the world? But sometimes, no matter how hard we work, we just can't seem to do that extra push, that extra push to get it out there, to actually get those work done. We're looking around us. We're not feeling good enough. We decide we're going to be okay. Sure, let's go ahead and do this. But there's something missing. So when you want to open an oyster, you can bring out Shakespeare's sword, shluck it open. Has anybody ever shucked an oyster? Yeah? What do you put on your left hand when you're holding that shucker in your right hand? A big glove. Not just a regular glove. A glove that has a lot of protection in it. With one slip of that knife, because it needs to be sharp, it needs to be accurate, you're not going to get in between that muscle. You watch people, they shuck oysters all day long, but they never take that glove off. It's a great protection. Me, I don't shuck oysters. I don't. You know what I do? I throw them on the fire. Because the heat will open it up. The heat will open it up. I then, of course, and I'm sorry if anybody has any of these sensibilities, I make a compound butter to smear on it afterwards because it is delicious, one of my favorite things in the world. But trying to get back to something nice and gentle. 
So what I do is I, I throw it on the fire because fire will ignite it to open. So where is the fire in us? Where is the fire in our beings, in our minds, and in our thoughts that can open us up to re release this pearl that we've been working on for so long? Where is it that we've been thinking about? Whatever that topic is out there, and you know, it can be something as small as just wanting to save this baby plant, or something as huge as wanting to provide clean water for the world with a new idea. I'm not good enough. No, we're all good enough. Remember that statement, if you think that something small in this world cannot make a change, think of a mosquito. Yeah, we think about a mosquito because a mosquito can make a lot of changes in the world. I've seen more people walk and run from a mosquito than anything else. So here is where we go. What is the fire in you? What is that heat in you that is going to burst your oyster wide open to release that pearl? It's your passion. It's that simple. It's your passion. And you don't want to let your passion get doused by the rain or the water or anything that's going to quell it. You want to get in there. Ignite your passion. Get that fire going in you. Get angry about stuff. Get up and stand on top of a box and go, this is the box I'm standing on. I'm going to make a difference in the world. Get passionate. That's the fire that you have. So you don't have to use a violent sword to make a change. You can use the change be made by your own passion. You get your fire going. You get yourself all worked up. You get people around you to join you. And you start doing your work. But never let go of the passion because it's the passion that's going to keep you open and keep you fired up to keep moving on. I think I got something here about passion. And remember this. This is something really important. If you don't do it the way you do it, it'll never get done the way you will do it. Because as individualized expressions of the divine, we get to do things our own way. It might look the same as somebody else's, but it can never be the same because we are all different. So when it gets done by and through you, it is a unique expression just as you are. Just as oysters are, no two pearls are exactly alike. This is because the oyster that produces them. As a result, a pearl truly is an autobiography of a specific oyster. That came from Federico Fellini. You know, he's made some amazing movies, but this statement, the uniqueness of the oyster is an autobiography of the person because just as nothing can come from you that is like anybody else's, so the pearl itself is unique unto its own. You could actually be doing an exact idea that has been expressed before, but in your own way, you'll bring forth your own oyster perfectly and magnificently. So now we have the passion. We got the passion going. But we really just don't know about the big world out there. Can we truly make a difference? And as I said about the mosquito, you can actually make the difference. You really want to be in truly who you are, the change that you want to see in the world. You have that desire. You've seen things around you that you're not in agreement with. Don't stop. Don't accept it. Don't. Don't be just like everybody else and go, oh, that's fine. No, that's not who we are. In Science of Mind, we get told over and over again that what you believe in who you are is what you can manifest out in the world. So if you're a passionate person, that can see a place to be changed or something to be different, get in there. 
get in there and make a difference. And it doesn't have to be something huge. We've seen a little, little pebble dropped into water that ripples out into the world over and over and over again. I'm willing to be a little pebble of water. I'm just willing to be the beginning of the change. Who knows what you can bring forth from there where you can get people around you. In, science, in, the, in um, Census for Spiritual Living, we have a global vision that says, we envision a world where personal responsibility joins with social conscience in every area of the political, corporate, academic, and social sectors, providing sustainable structures to further the emerging global consciousness. Yes, I'm going to read that again. Because it's a brilliant statement. Because it's one thing to be here and to deepen into our own spirituality so that we can change our world. But in doing so, we change the world as well. You cannot change anything in your environment without it extending out into the world. So let's get busy. Let's go back. We envision a world where personal responsibility joins with social conscience in every area of the political, corporate, academic, and social sectors providing sustainable structures to further the emerging global consciousness. We can approach this, folks, one baby step at a time. We just start by changing our thoughts. We start by changing our actions. We become the change we want to see in the world. And we always begin with ourselves. So every time you're invited or you feel that desire to come forward here and come to service or come to a class, remember that what you are doing is you are changing your inner world first so that you can see things differently in the outer world. Because there is a desire for each one of us here to know peace for ourselves and to know peace for the world. Now, sometimes, does it take a big sword to do it? Yes, but that's not the only way it can be done. We can light a fire. We can put that oyster on the fire. Watch it open as us to reveal the pearl that we've been working on this whole time, to take that irritation, form it into something beautiful, and go, here, this is my gift to the world. Yeah, here right now. And every little thing that we do matters. Don't think it doesn't. It really, truly does matter. Barack Obama said, change will not come if we wait for some other persons or some other time. We are the ones we have been waiting for. We are the change we seek. And Dr. Ernest Holmes says, what we are seeking is seeking us. So don't look away from that irritation. Just as the oyster, don't look away from it. Don't go, yeah, man, this is not working for me, but ugh, yeah, I just don't have the energy. No, get that passion going, don't look away, because you can, with each layer, each thing that you do, create that magnificent pearl that you can give to the world. And even if it's just the prayer you say. Because when we have an irritation, we always begin with our prayers. That is our tool. So don't think a prayer is not a pearl. It is a magnificent pearl. So even when you begin just with your prayer, you are doing it already. You are creating change as you create it within yourself. Does that sound good? All right. So I have a lovely story to bring us through to this whole thing. I'm going to read it, although I'd like to tell it, I'm going to read it. There was once a man who walked his dog every Sunday morning around a lake near his house. Week after week, he saw the same elderly woman sitting at the edge of the water with a small metal cage next to her. The man's curiosity finally got the best of him, and he approached the woman one day. 
He noticed that the cage was actually a small trap, and she had three small turtles in it. In her lap, there was a fourth turtle that she was carefully wiping down with a sponge. The man greeted her and said, if you don't mind my asking, what do you do with these turtles every week? She smiled and explained to him that she was cleaning their shells because any algae or scum that builds up on a turtle shell reduces its ability to absorb heat and slows down their swimming. It can also corrode their shell and weaken it over time. The man was impressed as the woman continued, I do this every Sunday morning to help the turtles. The man was, looked at her a little confused. He goes, but don't most turtles live their entire lives with algae on their shells? The woman agreed that was the truth. He replied then, well then, you're kind, of, you're kind to do this, but are you really making a difference if most turtles don't have people around to clean their shells? The woman laughed as she looked down at the small turtle on her lap. Young man, if this turtle could talk, he would say, I'm making all the difference in the world. So in conclusion, folks, don't ignore that which brings you discomfort. Look directly at it. Don't make excuses for why, there, for why it is there or why you can't do anything to change it. Bring it front and center into your consciousness and into your heart. Begin working on it with what you already have within you and allow your curiosity to reveal greater possibilities Slowly the irritant will be transformed into the pearl. And when you are ready, you get to reveal it to the world. And so it is. Let's take this to prayer. as we breathe into this moment and we recognize the wonderment of all that is around us we lean in deep into it knowing that it is the divine knowing that it is the divine in action through and as every single thing knowing that it is the divine in action in and through us so I recognize and know in this minute that there is a call on our hearts to step forward there is a call in our hearts to bring something magnificent into this world. There is a call on our hearts to fulfill a purpose, a calling, a desire, a wonderment that is within us that needs to be known. And so I know for each one of us that this that is coming forth from within may feel uncomfortable. We might not want to look at it, we might want to put it aside, but we do not, for we know that there is something to be revealed as us in our unique and magnificent way. And so I know and claim for each one of us as we walk our path this week and out into the world that we feel, sense, and know, and acknowledge, and turn from our resistance to look at it again and go, wow, I have been layering this for years. The pearl is almost ready. Where can I find the fire? Where can I find my passion? and allow myself to open up and move and reveal this magnificence that is mine to give to the world. I know that it is in each and every one of us to do this in our own way, be it a beginning from a prayer or walking out into a magnificent organization. It matters not. What matters is the action of us giving of ourselves. So I call this good. So I just release this prayer knowing that we are solidly grounded in the beauty of the wonderment of all that is, and we work from that place, and we call it good. We call it magnificent. So we just claim it and release it by saying, and so it is. Thank you. Thank you, Susanna. Yes, yes. Thank you.